everyone, this is Samantha Johnson Lancaster and this is The Perfect Bite. Tonight I will be making chicken cordon bleu and we will call this show Making Chicken Great Again. Let's get started. Tell us about the ingredients that you're going to be using to get into chicken cordon bleu. Okay. What do we have here? Um, I have whole chicken breasts that we are going to butterfly, um, then stuff with a smoked ham and a sliced Swiss. And I picked a deli cut of the ham and a deli slice of the Swiss because most everyone has this on hand and it makes a quick and easy dinner. So that seems relatively simple. So you've got uh, six guests tonight for dinner. Uh, so we're going to be preparing dinner for six. How long would you say that doing something like this is going to take the average cook? The average cook, maybe 30 minutes, uh, me 20. Okay, because you've done it many times. <laughs> done it many before. times in about 40 minutes cooking time and then maybe about five to 10 for plating. So. Okay, well then let's get started. So uh, <laughs> what's the first thing we're going to do? First thing we're gonna do is going to butterfly our chicken. Butterfly the chicken. Yes. Okay, so tell me about that, because I am a novice. I'm not much of a cook, but obviously you are a <laughs> chef. So let's see how you butterfly a chicken breast. Well, a lot of people like to pound it out, but I feel like the chicken loses the juiciness when you pound it out. So I like to leave it whole and just make a nice even cut through the breast. So I'm gonna flip okay, it this so way. So that's what we're going to do. And that, is that relatively cut right in half? Yes. It's, it's gonna look like a, a heart, like a heart or a butterfly. Okay. Yes. And here we go. And, uh, and obviously uh, you're going to be stuffing that after you. The perfect heart. Perfect heart, oh yeah, beautiful, all right. So we're gonna do each one of those mm -hmm. since we're having six for dinner. But I'm gonna stretch the recipe. Oh. We're going to slice it on the bias and serve it over the vegetable. So no, you don't need a giant hunk of chicken in front of you. It's all about presentation. And how many uh, ounces would you say those chicken breasts are? Just kind of a, a guesstimate. Well, it's usually by the pound. So I would say it's about, mm, this feels like about a third of a pound per a breast. Third of a pound. Yeah. Okay. And I would think that something like this is relatively inexpensive for chicken. Isn't chicken still today, in this day and age, Samantha, a relatively inexpensive dinner? It is. The other night I actually made this for my family and it cost me $17.50 total. Wow. And yeah. how many people were you feeding? Then? I actually served five because I had some guests over to try out the recipe. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's inexpensive today when meat prices continue to rise. I don't know what a filet costs today, but the last <laughs> time I was out to a restaurant, I think it was near $50 for an eight ounce filet. Yes, at least. <laughs> so $17 sounds great to feed six people. All right, so you're getting the hearts cut, yes. laid as they say. And then we're gonna salt and pepper. Okay. And, each of uh, these. Let's see how much salt and pepper you use. Okay, great. That's, That's always interesting to find out how much salt and pepper it takes. Do you do that to taste or do you do that because you, you've known over the years how much to put on? It's for it's taste. taste. Um, the, uh, the ham has salt in it and so does the Swiss, so you don't want to over salt it. It is a smoked ham, so it's going to be a little extra salty. So, okay, so we definitely want to. Let me bring this this way. Salt. Yes. Can get a shot of that. That's great. Oh, not too much. No. And not too much pepper. Always a lot of pepper. Oh, I love pepper. pepper. Well, that is that's interesting. More pepper than salt. Later, we're going to be making a peppercorn Swiss cheese sauce to pour over the whole oh, thing. Oh, well, so that'll be incorporate it all. Okay. okay. And the next thing we do is take the ham. Yes. And a, a slice goes on each of the breasts. I like more ham. Oh, more ham. Because when you cut through it, you want to see the ribbons of ham. Oh, yes. very interesting. Okay, I like that. If it's too big when I'm rolling it, I'll cut a little bit off. I see. But we're going to start off, go big. Yeah, go big. And then right. trim it out later. Trim the fat later. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So here we go with the ham. 
And then how many slices of cheese? More than one? I only do one on the inside mm -hmm. um, because we are doing a sauce on top that will cover the rest of the cheese that we need in our life. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there we go. And now we're going to toothpick it. Toothpick it. All right. So let's believe... see you. Let's see you get the toothpicks and toothpick it. Okay. Got the toothpicks. So here we are going to now stuff the breast. Stuff the breast. Yes. Okay. That's why you needed the toothpick. Pull the meat and the cheese in just a little bit. Okay. It's okay if you have an opening like this mm -hmm. because we're going to dredge it in egg and then breadcrumb. Okay. It'll seal so it. It'll seal all yeah. That. Okay. So there goes the toothpick. So hold everything together. Yes. Well, how many toothpicks do you need to do this? I generally use about three per breast. Okay. The hardest part of the entire dish is finding them when you're done cooking it, though. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Okay. So, chicken cordon bleu by Samantha Johnson Lancaster. <laughs> Are you guys drooly? I'm, I'm getting ready for this. I'm getting so hungry watching her prepare this. And, uh, you know, in some of the finer restaurants, this is really a delicacy. It is. Well, well known uh, chefs to the stars do this. Well, I was thinking of making it with the uh, Gruyere cheese, which is an imported Swiss, an actual Swiss, but I'm using domestic Swiss because I'm trying to show you how a full-time working mom can just pull something out of the fridge and make it delectable. So. And do it in a short mm -hmm. order with Absolutely. not too many uh, hours to prepare a gourmet meal. So that looks really great. So here we go. We're rolling and toothpicking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, three toothpicks per chicken breast. About. Again, and the Swiss cheese. So Matthew, how many times have you made this particular meal? Over 20 mm -hmm. in my life. Um, was it something that you always wanted to prepare? Or where did you get the recipe originally? Uh, I just wanted to challenge myself. I mm -hmm. think it was more of something that, like I said, I had in the fridge. What am I going to do tonight? I want to make chicken. We're so sick of chicken. Let's stuff it. Let's do something different. Um, ham and Swiss is just something I had. And when I nailed it and I had the great response, I said, heck, I could do this every time. My daughter loves it. Uh -huh. She's only six. And you tell me that she even helps you when you're preparing your meals yes. because there's something about having her in the kitchen with you that she feels empowered mm -hmm. uh, to uh, be a, uh, well, uh, didn't you tell me she was a picky eater? No, she is not. She's not a picky eater. And that is because I introduce her to the tastes and the smells and the textures of the kitchen. And her name is Caitlin? Caitlin. Caitlin. Yeah. Okay. And I think more parents should do that because then I, we don't have to have a picky eater. If you introduce them to more of what's going on in the kitchen, they'll be more apt to try new things. That's right. And uh, probably gets a sense of pride. Absolutely. In mom do that. Absolutely. And sometimes, I think we have talked about this in the past, a lot of children are picky eaters, or at least someone says, oh, my kid is a picky eater. Yes, it right? drives me nuts. Uh, and I, so how do we fix that? I think as parents, we should get together and bring our kids into the kitchen, uh, involve them, give them a sense of pride of cutting the vegetable that they would not normally eat, mm -hmm. of um, cooking the vegetable they would not normally eat. And when it comes out of the oven, it's, oh, I did that, I helped do that. And it's a sense of pride and they eat it. And you also told me that uh, garlic is one of your favorite. Uh, uh, every time uh, that you cook, you like fresh garlic. Yes. Uh, there's something romantic about uh, having garlic or chopping garlic. I love garlic and so does my daughter. And when I'm chopping it, she says, Mm, Mom, it smells so good. And we're having garlic on the chicken tonight? Tonight I'm actually going to make a roasted red pepper, sun-dried tomato, garlic uh, spread over mm -hmm. a toasted baguette okay. to go on the plate with the chicken cordon bleu. All right. Yes. Uh, 
chickens, I think you told me, is something everyone has in the freezer, and most times people are bored to death. Bored to death, yes. Yeah. So this is a way to make chicken exciting, and uh, you're definitely doing it right now. And chicken cord and blue is one of the ways. So and uh, it's not too many ingredients. It's just the sliced ham, it's the chicken breast, it's the Swiss cheese. Um, the peppers, the garlic. Uh, what did I forget? What else goes into this? Um, we've got bell peppers uh, for the sauce. I've got also. I'm going to be um, steaming some broccolini, uh -huh. which is part of the broccoli family. And now we are dipping the chicken breast in egg batter. We are dredging in egg wash, and now we are dipping it into a toasted, pre-toasted breadcrumb mixture. Okay, so I dredged it in egg, and now I'm putting it on a pre-toasted panko and seasoned breadcrumb mixture. I like to use um, the breadcrumbs and the panko together because the seasoned breadcrumbs have tons of flavor, and the panko is a little crunchier and a little healthier for you. Here we go. So the egg is actually getting the panko and the breadcrumbs to stick to the chicken. That's your binder. That's it's going to bind you all together, yes. Okay. Excuse me. So far, it looks relatively simple. It really I is. It's just messy. <laughs> it's just messy, but, yes. I, but I even think I could do it. <laughs> now, I'm not very good in the kitchen. All right. Okay, so. Now, how many eggs would you say you had to put in the bowl in order to use enough eggs to get everything as your... Depending on how many breasts you're using, I have usually only use three. Three eggs. But I, um, I used five this time because these are larger breasts, and I did have five larger breasts, okay. so I wanted to stretch it. And how many ounces would you estimate the breasts are? Uh, it's about a third of a pound, okay. and eight ounces is a half pound. Okay. So, so that's a good meal somewhere in there. Is. Yes, yes. Plus, we're putting on top of other things. Yeah. I'm going to add some bread, some toast. It's going to be great. And we're even going to have dessert. Yes, we are. <laughs> These two. And uh, we'll do the rest and be right back. Hey, welcome to Deli Delicious. What can I get you? Grilled chicken Caesar salad. Number 41. You know I love that steak and jack. Everything on that? The works. Ooh, it's so hard to choose. Let me get the 35, the 41, and the 24. Absolutely. Number 44, chipotle chicken. Turkey, avocado, and sprouts. Number 45, barbecue tri-tip. I love the bread. The meat. The crisp lettuce. Lots of avocado. Everything. Fresh ingredients just taste better at Deli Delicious. Delicious. Ginza's Finer Dining is a culinary pleasure for fans of Asian cuisine. Our menu features interesting textures, aromatic flavors, combined with beautiful presentations wrapped all together in a sophisticated atmosphere to make your visit here a memorable experience. Ginza, it is a masterful mix of Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, sushi, and hibachi grill-style dishes. We hope you enjoy eating at Ginza as much as we enjoy serving you. So we now have all of the chicken breasts breaded, and uh, one of the things that uh, we wanted to tell the folks is that's what you used along with the breadcrumbs. Uh, you mentioned panko, and that kind of gives it a flavor, but you also said that you heated up the breadcrumbs yes. prior to putting them in the bowl. So I did a Japanese breadcrumb, which is panko, and a seasoned breadcrumb blend, and I baked them for f uh, six minutes at 400 degrees, and it gives them a nice toasty color, oh. because when you're actually baking the chicken, you're only cooking the meat. The crumbs won't toast. Uh -huh. So that's how you get that crunch factor before Wonderful. you put it in. And now we're going over to the oven, and what exactly do you do the temperature was? It's a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. Now it looks like broccolini time. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and so tell me what you're going to do with the broccolini. So the broccolini, we are going to do a steam, a quick steam. I like it when it has a little backbone to it, not mushy. And then we will be preparing a Swiss cheese peppercorn sauce. 
that will go over the broccolini and the chicken cordon bleu. So we are over now where the broccolini is going to be steamed and you are now going to do what, Samantha? I am going to make a roasted red pepper sun-dried tomato paste basically to go over a toasted baguette to accompany the meal. Okay, so how do we do that? First we're going to start off with some olive oil. Very much. Not very much. And our roasted red peppers. Okay. And we want to cook these with um, the finely chopped garlic that I have mm -hmm. for about 10 minutes or until dry. Uh -huh. And then we're going to add it into the blender with uh, sun dried tomatoes and the rest of the ingredients. Smells so good. <laughs> Wish we had smell o vision. <laughs> How long will this take now? Huh? About 10 minutes. Smells now good. I see you have butter there. Is the butter going in any of this? No. The butter is going to be in our homemade Swiss cheese peppercorn sauce. Oh, okay. We will get to that soon. <laughs> This just needs to cook down a little bit, and then we'll be able to uh, chop it up in the blender. Richard's a Valley Dining Tradition, serving great food since 1969, including Richard's famous deluxe dinner for two, multiple choices at a fixed price. Great tasting steaks or seafood. Richard's Deluxe Dinner for Two, a favorite. It even includes wine. A Central Valley dining tradition on historic Belmont off 180. Follow our neon sign to Richard's where you'll find something special and something good right on the menu. You know us, we're the Fresno Breakfast House, a great place for breakfast or lunch. Did you know we have a beautiful banquet facility? The Grand Banquet Room, adjacent to the Fresno Breakfast House. It's one of Fresno's newest event venues. Our location makes the perfect event center for bridal and baby showers, birthday parties, award ceremonies, family reunions, holiday parties, and conferences. Our lovely venue includes AV equipment and can host up to 130 guests. We combine casual elegance with unbeatable values. Call the Grand Banquet Room for your next occasion. Okay, we are back, and that's been about five to six minutes. And I noticed, Samantha, that you added a little bit extra olive oil. Yes. When to you're make sure it wasn't going to burn. When you're cooking on a gas grill, you always want to add a little more oil because it is a higher temperature of flame. And I can tell you that it really smells wonderful. All right. So what is the next thing we are going to do? We're going to add this into the blender. Goes to the Do the safer route here. Mm -hmm. all right. and then we're going to add it all in. in the blender. And we're going to do some sun dried tomatoes. Sun dried tomatoes. Give it an earthy and flavor. What was the sun dried tomatoes? Uh, was it just right out of the uh, the can, or? They come in a jar with their own oil and seasonings. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to add anything to the sun dried tomatoes. No. Okay. So we've got all that done. Now we're going to we add salt and pepper. We have salt here. Okay. I'd say about a teaspoon. Okay. And then. And pepper. Always pepper. Perfect. And how long do we run the blender? Um, well, we're, we're adding something else. We're, we're going to add sugar. sugar because the peppers can get a little bitter. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they're not bitter. And I would do about two teaspoons, two and a half. That's it. Okay. And also lemon juice. And this is to bring the acidity with the garlic and the red peppers all together. So we ran the blender only about 15 to 20 seconds. Yes. And uh, you're doing a little taste test mm -hmm. to make sure it's right. How do we know it's right, Samantha? When you don't taste any bitterness from the bell pepper. Okay. But I feel like it needs just a little more lemon juice. A little bit more mm -hmm. lemon. See, you have to, you have to kind of know these things. 
So we're going to add a little bit more lemon juice. Yeah. And that will give it the special flavor that we're looking for. Kind of tie it all in together. So we'll be right back because we're going to turn the blender back on. <laughs> Take a vacation for an hour at Toledo's Mexican Restaurant. Come and enjoy our open-air patio and relax with a perfect margarita tucked away in the Mission Village Shopping Center on Shaw and Fresno. Toledo's Mexican Restaurant. Comida auténtica. Come experience Lynn's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together. Lunch or dinner, Lynn's offers an endless buffet, including sushi, dim sum, vegetarian, teppanyaki, all freshly prepared with warm family hospitality. Complete your meal with one of 14 flavors of exotic tea prepared at your table. Lynn's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together seven days a week. 5155 North Blackstone in Fresno. Visit us on the web at lensfusion.com. Okay, we are back, and now the blender goes into the bowl. The ingredients from the blender go into the bowl. And uh, that's our little, I guess that would be a kind of a puree. A puree. I was going to make it a little thicker, more of like a chopped, but um, I think this texture is going to go better with the meal. Okay, great. There we go. Part done. All right. And next is what? Well, next we are going to toast the bread, All right. steam the rest of the broccolini, All right. and make a homemade peppercorn Swiss cheese sauce. Okay, now it's time for the roux. Yes. And what is the roux, Samantha? A roux is basically two tablespoons butter, two tablespoons flour, mixed in a pan, and add milk and whatever else you desire. And tonight we're going to add Swiss cheese. Wow, okay. Get your butter melted down. You don't want it up too high. It'll burn. And it's something you need to stay there and stir and stir and stir until you get the right consistency. So I'm going to do about two tablespoons of flour. Stir and stir and stir. Until you get this paste. Uh -huh. And it looks like, well, what am I going to do with that? And then we're going to add our milk. And we're going to add about a cup of milk. A cup of milk. And that's real milk. Whole milk gives it a thicker consistency and a better flavor. I remember you telling me when you were shopping for the grocery. Yes. Let's get real milk. <laughs> Not that 2% stuff. Watered down milk. Watered down. <laughs> a little bit more. It might look a little runny, but once I add the cheese to the mixture, it will have a better consistency and it'll be nice and thick. Okay. And the cheese will melt in that? Absolutely. How long do you stir it? I want to get all the little bits and pieces, the crumbs and the, the roux off the sides of the dish. Yeah. I want to make sure you show that to our viewers when it's all finished. Well, so we still have a, still have, yeah, a medium thick, yet. not much to see yet. So I'll add a little peppercorn. Oh, okay. And then we're going to add just chopped deli sliced Swiss. Like I said earlier, you can go gourmet and get some Gruyere, uh, some imported Swiss. But if you have this in the in the fridge, it does the same trick, uh -huh. same flavor. And when you melt cheese, basically it all tastes the same. So, yeah. so uh, well, how many slices would you say were in that chunk? I added eight slices. Eight slices. Yeah, okay. which is probably also around a cup. Turn it Let down. And stir. Yes. And how long is this going to take us? This is, it's basically done. Done? Yeah. Really? So that cheese will melt back fast? Yes. And this is the roux. The roux is the flour and the butter. Ah. That, and if you can make a roux, you can make anything. Right. Yeah. And, and the roux is going to go on top of the chicken? The Swiss cheese sauce will be drizzled over, yes. However, I'm going to add a little more milk okay. because the cheese is overpowering right now. And that's kind of an eyeball kind of thing. It really is. It almost looks like you're making mashed potatoes to me. Or like a, a macaroni and cheese sauce or an alfredo. 
Yeah. This is the first step to make any of those. Okay. Yeah. And have we started to steam our broccolini yet? The broccolini is percolating. It's percolating. There it is. Okay. And how long does that steam? I forgot. Yeah, generally about, I like six to eight minutes. Um, the pan I'm using mm -hmm. is a little more open, so it's not getting as sealed, that so it might take a little bit longer. Okay. All right, and our Swiss cheese sauce is done. Great. And we are now going to take the chicken out of the oven. Chicken's so go ready. Ahead, Samantha. All right. Is it finished? Yes. How it, do you know? The cheese is oozing out. Uh -huh. You only need to cook it about 35 to 40 minutes. Let's come up here and take a picture of that. And it's nice to 40 minutes. and toasty. All right. And you will be cutting it now on the tray? I'm going to let it cool. I don't want to burn myself, but I will be cutting it shortly. Right now, I'm going to uh, bake our toastettes okay. for our roasted red pepper sun-dried tomato right. sauce. So toast goes into the same oven? Yes. And what, does anything go on the toastettes? No. Um, I would normally do olive oil, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm putting a spread on there. So I don't want it to be too soggy. Too soggy. Just a natural toast should be fine. And how long will that be in the oven? I would do these for about 10 minutes, but I'm also going to raise the temperature. To you want them hotter or cooler? I want it 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. Okay, and the toasted baguettes are finished, and you are now putting what on the baguettes? This is that roasted red pepper sun-dried tomato spread, and this is going to complement the flavors of the chicken cordon bleu and the broccolini and cheese sauce. Okay, and so three per plate. I would like to do that and kind of fan it out. Okay, and you're doing one plate as our showpiece for yes. the perfect bite. And, uh, and then you are now going to show everyone how you cut the chicken cordon bleu. So the hardest part of chicken cordon bleu is finding, finding, the finding the toothpicks. Which is not easy. No, because they're stuck in there. There's, There's no easier way either, is there? No. I found Sorry, two. You, how many did you put in? Three? Three. Okay. So There's, there's one, one more. But that's why we're going to cut it okay. and kind of stretch our five chicken breasts into six entrees okay. tonight. So. so here we go. So first, first there's step. another toothpick. All right. You're down to two. No, that's the third, actually. Oh, that's <laughs> the third. Okay. And we got it out. Okay. Now All we right. can go. Two slices. And how many slices would you say is a good serving? About three to four. Three to four? Yes. Per plate. Per plate. And we're serving six tonight. Mm -hmm. so. The perfect bite. <laughs> Making chicken great again. I don't know where I heard that. Something very similar recently. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Our studio audience is enjoying this. There we are, and then we're going to finish it off with a Swiss cheese. There's the cheese. Homemade sauce. My goodness, look at that. And dinner is served. And dinner is served, and that's all there is to it. That's all there is? Well, we are going to have a Facebook page for Samantha Johnson Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be able to see this recipe on her Facebook page. You'll see the name of the Facebook page on the link right here on the screen. So go to that link. You'll see the recipe. And hopefully you'll be seeing more of Samantha <laughs> Johnson Lancaster right here on this station or on YouTube. Samantha, thank you so much for doing this for us tonight. Thank it's you, Gary. Been great. Thank you. Bye now. Goodbye. Can we applaud now? Yes. <laughs>